recording. Yes, we are. Do- yeah. Almost Dr. Derek Smith, ladies yes. and gentlemen. We are beyond fortunate and honored and blessed to have him on our team. Doc- Almost Dr. Smith. He's working on his EDD, but I don't want to steal his thunder. He has graciously accepted my invitation to talk about online learning and what's coming, what needs to be done. His his experience is, is, un- is without peer and his, uh, his ability to contribute to the SNU learning environment is just absolutely um, just a gem for us right now. But he's only been here about six months, right? Yeah. So he's right out of the ramper, but I had the opportunity to meet with him the other day. And if you don't know who I am, long suffering, ha ha ha, Associate Dean, Department of Criminal Justice, Social Sciences, Jeff Zarnick. And it's great to see everybody. You've seen these videos before. I want to thank everyone for watching. So almost Dr. Derek. Yes. Right. Your background, which I find fascinating, you really have some uh, tremendous in-depth uh, learning and education background. So first, I'll be hopefully Dr. Derek Smith. Earliest December 2024, it's on my calendar. I can defend hopefully by the spring Excellent. and I can officially have it on yeah. my wall. So I'm excited about that. I've been in education for about, this will be my 10th year. I started off 10 years ago teaching the GED in my yeah. first my first classrooms were kids between 16 to 60. And the majority of the teenagers, they weren't what you think that got put out of school for fighting. A lot of them, it was the learning. Mm-hmm. Coming, coming from underperforming schools of where there was high turnover in teachers, changes over in leadership and when i got hired the ged was moving from what you would think is a standard normal multiple choice test to they use the web's depth of knowledge to write the new test and a lot of that test is it's just as hard as a college entrance exam of where they're applying knowledge and so as I got to learn a little bit more about them is understanding that they needed an explanation of how to do this, how to think, how to prepare. And so I took ideas from like the first one I had is uh, ESPN has Scott Van Pelt's one big thing of where it's a three minute synopsis of his larger point on something in sports. Mm-hmm. I, I introduced that to my students and I said, "Is you got three minutes to come up with any idea of what you think is important. And we're going to sit here and dive into what do you think this really means? What are the hidden meanings? What are you really trying to say? Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, because I always believed in pushing outside the box thinking, my director wasn't quite thrilled with it. Uh, (laughs) VP wasn't quite thrilled with it but the thing of it is I was a big believer in they needed to know the how and I read a book uh, Robert Maranzano's Building Background Knowledge a book I still have on my shelf to this day and one of the things that he says about building background knowledge and improving is academically enriching experiences yes um and students who have come from underperforming schools haven't had a lot of exposure to a lot of higher level thinking in in depth academically enriching experience. So I brought that to the GED world. Um, we would do our one big thing once a week. Um, we would do critical analysis of TV shows just for them to get an understanding of what does this really mean? Because on the GED test, uh, one of the passages of Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail, they had to apply it to some bigger, larger context. Okay. And they would be scored on their writing. So one of the things that I was a big believer in, let's just take something simple, something they watch in uh, Empire had just came out. And we talked about empire. What is the larger context of empire as it relates to the world, society? And as they started to feel like 
okay, I can really get this. I'm understanding what they're asking me to do on the GED. I'm learning how to think, learning how to prepare. And one of the things that came out of that is all but one of my students graduated with their GED. <laughs> yeah. And to me, one of the most proudest moments I had was one student. Um, she basically got shamed out of public school because they thought she was slow. Oh. And I told her, I said, you're going to pass this test. We're not going to worry about the what was. We're only going to focus on you passing and on a sheet of paper. I wrote her name and graduated. And I gave it to her the day before the test. So she goes and takes the test the next day. And we're about halfway through the period. I hear someone screaming up and down. Don't think nothing of it. And all of a sudden, I feel a little body come up from behind me and just hug me and cry. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, what happened? <laughs> and, and there she was. She had passed the test. Wow, right. And she, and she handed me the phone. It was her grandmother. That was her first grandchild to get their GED or high school diploma. Wow. And she was What a stop. legacy. Yeah, wow. She was screaming, thank you, thank you, thank you. And small inconsequential to that is I received an award for innovation in the classroom. Right. Um, then I would move on to a private school of where I started off teaching middle school and high school. Right. And a lot of the students who I had didn't have success in traditional public or private school. They had failed state mandated tests. They had low grades in language arts, math, and the commonality was underperforming schools, but also the academically enriching experiences. So I took the same approach that I had when I taught the GED of is integrating how to think, how to learn, and building those foundational skills. And in my first year, I taught pre-algebra. I had a student that had failed pre-algebra twice in other schools. And one of the things I found was, I had found an old episode of the Wonder Years of where there was about a math teacher, about he was relentlessly unapologetic, demanding, and tough. We watched, we watched the episodes, but one of the things I did afterwards is that I got a big can, and I said, we're all going to put our horror stories about our previous math teachers in this can, <laughs> and when we put them in there, we're starting fresh. Right. Everything is, I believe, positive. Right, right. And at the end of that year, the one student who was a horrible math student, she scored in the top 10% on the Iowa basic skills. Her language arts had improved. And now this spring, she's going to be a college graduate and going to be off to graduate school. I won teacher of the year that year for, again, believing that with underperforming students, it's the how. It's the how, right. I was Which such, ne they've never heard. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. I was a big believer in the how is a before we get into the actual learning, I always took time or two days to deal with the how. Because once they understood the how, everything else came into effect. Right. So in, in my second year, um, I taught psychology and I taught a couple of the math classes. And one of the things that is with that group, 
watched um, a lot of the placement tests. Again, are written at that applying knowledge. And some of the interviews for the art schools ask you to apply knowledge. So I came up with the idea for them to teach a master's class. Okay. I, I had seen some of the masters. I said, let's try this. Of how do you teach a class, but more importantly, putting together one complete thought, synthesis of what you think is important, of what you want to teach. So we looked at some of the master class videos, but one of the things that I ask them every day, what does this look like to you? What are the steps needed to put together a complete thought? And they would have their charts and their diagrams of, of where they built their own process to one complete thought. And after it was done, they were more amazed that they were doing the exact same stuff kids in the upper private schools were doing and things that some public schools were doing like okay they felt like they were making progress in their learning because again going back to the it was always to the how to me mm -hmm. the how mm -hmm. how the how so after two years the outgoing administrator promoted me to director of academics and college counseling. I oversaw the transition from middle school to high school and high school to beyond. And one of the things that I emphasized with our high school faculty was skills based knowledge right. is that two year, four year schools and even in the workforce. They don't really care about your content. I right. said I sat right. in so many meetings with deans and admissions folks that talk about skills. And so right. I began the course of with our teachers looking at developing assignments in a pathway that was focused on skills based learning. Right. Of where instead of a, a midterm and a final exam, we had capstones. Right. And we looked at some of the college capstones from two and four year schools and developed a capstone project and developed a lot of the higher ed world into K 12. I never looked for K 12 to inform my thinking and practice when it came to teaching and learning. Because if you're going to get marginalized students to yes. the next level you've got to look to where they want to go right and, and i would spend a lot of time with deans and college faculty of where 95 percent of my assignments came from a higher ed perspective and the biggest assignment that had an impact on me was uh, I created a senior capstone course of where whether you were going for a two year or a four year or just even in the workforce, we read the book Tuesdays with Maury. Um, and the ultimate goal was there was 13 Tuesdays in the book where Mitch sat down with Maury. You're going to put together 13 Tuesdays of what's informed you, sort of those barriers. What are those things that are important to you, just like in the book that Maury taught Mitch? What do you want to teach the world? Right. What do you want to teach yourself? Right. They became reflective thinkers. Yes, right. right. Thinkers. Right. And they For have the first an, time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were able to have an analysis and a synthesis about depression, schools, and all of these other things that they have gone through. Mm -hmm. They began to understand how to put together an argument, how to put together a presentation. Okay. And because the two students that are uh, that do go on, that did go on. One of them is on the dean's list right now. Right. 
another one is going to be uh, at the top of their class in art school. And they and they go back to that assignment of I really understood how to think, how to put ideas together. And that to me was the far most important thing to me is that they had a real understanding of how to do that. Well, Derek, with that said, now we're at our 15 minute mark. Uh, so this is our little teaser reel. So the next segment, and leaving it in your lap as the expert here, yeah. let's talk about, if you're willing, let's talk about yeah. how this translates to the online environment. That'll be okay. part two. That good? Yeah. All right, so this is going to get put in all the classrooms for the upcoming term starting January 3. And then a week after that, we'll go to part two. And the students and faculty are going to listen to this on, on the how, on the how, and how faculty can translate that too and activate that in their classrooms. So okay. this is just part one. So almost Dr. Derek who is one of our great SNU employees, colleagues, and friend. We're gonna, we'll see part two, second week of the upcoming term. With that said, Derek, thank you. Happy New Year. Thank you. And we will see you at the beginning of the new year. All right, thank you so much. No, 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 the thanks are all mine, and everyone else is going to get a chance to listen to your words, your pearls of wisdom as we go. And I say there's part two, but I'm seeing part three and four as well. <laughs> thank you so much. All right, we'll see you soon. We'll see you next week. See Thanks. Ya. Bye.